Hey, what is up, everybody? Today, we're going to be right to Film Theory. They missed the point. Try Guys drama. If you're new to the channel, hit the like button, subscribe. But no further ado, let's get in this reaction. Where, I got to be honest, I did not want to make this episode. No, no joke. I was actively looking for excuses not to do this episode. And yet, oh, shoot. each time I shelved it, Ever since the Try Guys drama first started, my feed has just been full of entertainment news media making like the worst takes possible about Dang. this situation. Saying stuff that wasn't just cringe, wasn't just facepalm worthy, but was just actively making me and everyone else on the team mad because of how ignorant and irresponsible it was. So Dang. as a YouTuber and mad. as a business owner, it felt like I had to sit down on the couch and set the record straight to call out a lot of the problems that they're having as it relates to this wider issue. You. So consider this my open letter to mainstream media friends. Strap in because film theory is getting its own first ever serious couch time episode. Oh, oh sure, ready for this, y'all? Supposed to stay over on game theory. So if you've ever existed on the internet, or you're even not on the internet, you're probably familiar with the Try Guys at this point. Keith, yeah, we Zach, are familiar. Eugene, yep. and Ned. The four of them got their start on BuzzFeed during its heyday, becoming one of, if not the first format on the site with a recurring cast of popular, relatable characters. And and their show was simple but effective. The guys try things. No clickbait there, it is all there in the name. They put mm. themselves out of their comfort zones to wear women's high heels or wear women's Halloween costumes. I ain't gonna lie. Are you a person who will wear women's Halloween costumes? I mean, it might sound bad, but this is not that bad versus what I think. I mean, this guy right here, he got a lot of skin showing. I ain't gonna lie, though. He was tripping. This dude... He just got a little hairy chest a little bit, bro. Let's go. Or wear women's underwear. You know what? Come no, I would that do that one. There was a lot of wearing women's sexy things in the early days. But there was also plenty of other videos out there, like watching them learn to dance ballet, or race dune buggies, or that play looks fun. Rocket League. Admittedly, not all of them were bangers. But still, it was fun to watch these guys, these fish-out-of-water experiences, as these complete noobs were learning all about the weird, wacky, interesting, dangerous things in the world around them. Eventually, mm. they decided to break off from BuzzFeed, because, oh, let's be honest, shoot. everyone made that decision. That and true. they decided to create their own production company, Second Try. Collectively, we decided it was just time to try something else, and that involves this new production company out of Ned's old house. Oh, weird. Without a corporate hmm. overlord, suddenly they were free to make and do whatever they wanted with their brand. We can now be truly, unabashedly, wholly ourselves. There's no holding back because it's ours. We own that life. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. They took their brand and they made it into everything that they wanted it to be. That Live shows, cool, merch, though, podcasts, spin-off shows, books, documentaries, interviews with important people like Dr. Fauci. They even got themselves a show on Food Network, which Whoa. then brings Ooh, us to recent times and the drama. About a month ago, the Try Guys had to fire one of their founding members, Ned, the one with the house from those clips earlier. The re Dang, man, the one with the house. Man, they started off in the house, man. One thing I can say, it's a lot of people like this. A lot of people start off on these big networks and then they branch and do their own thing, which I obviously think that's a smart idea sometimes. You don't want to be stuck to one brand for so long. But dang, they fire one of the important peoples. Let's see why, y'all, though. Reason for this? Well, it came out that he had been having a long-term workplace affair with a Try Guys producer and production manager. Wow, their production no. Like their documentary and their spinoff show, Food Babies. Uh, put a pin in that. We're going to come back to it. That's After the crazy. firing, the remaining Try Guys, <laughs> with an I, get it? Because there were three of them left. It's a lame joke. Other people have made it, but they made it to me first, so... I get to claim it. Anyway, they made a video about the situation to their 8 million subscribers. Multiple fans alerted us that they had seen Ned uh, and an employee engaging in public romantic Wow, behavior. that's Ned crazy. confirmed the reports. And thus began a three-week process of engaging with employment lawyers, corporate lawyers, HR, PR, and what? more. We were acutely aware of just how contrary this was to the values of the company we've built and those of everyone who works here. So on Friday, September 16th, the three of us signed written consent approving the removal of Ned as a manager and an employee. So now that you're caught up with all of that and spent crazy. the last page of this script talking about the history of the Try Guys, throw it all away because I am here to tell you that at the end of the day, this video is not about them. It's not about their drama. This couch time talk is all about the mainstream media and how they covered 
this entire situation. Mm -hmm. You see, in the aftermath of the this. team ousting Ned, the internet just blew up with coverage about this situation. Wall Street Journal, CNN, Vanity Fair, Cosmo, The Sun. And the coverage was fine for the most part. I mean, there was a surprisingly large amount of it, but it was, you know, it was okay. It was neutral, it stuck to the facts, the publicly made statements, things like that. But then, in a desperate bid for relevance, Saturday Night Live decided to enter the chat with a sketch oh, that SNL. was so wow. off the mark that it single-handedly wanted me to make Make this video. So the full story is that your friend had a side chick and you fired him? Yes. And we hope he is somewhere on his back with a bullet in his brain and belly. Whoa. <laughs> Dang, that's why they really going in on this though, on this joke though. Wow. I don't know, bro. He was I mean, do you think that was wrong that they fired him just because they was messing with some of the workers? He was messing with the worker? Put in the comment section right now. I don't know. It depends the situation, y'all. Okay, isn't that a bit extreme? No. You have to remember, Laura, the side chick was a food baby. In a fit of rage, <laughs> I drafted a script up, but ultimately, I calmed down and let it pass. I mean, I was worried about SNL here. If I were to make a video about every single unfunny, out-of-touch sketch that they air, well, I'd have infinite content. What a brilliant channel idea. Anyway, I let it go, and about a week passed, and everything was fine, until yet another article was published about this whole situation, this time from the New York Times, and again, it missed the entire point of the situation, using lines like uh, this, uh, quote right here, the whole thing felt a bit like a hostage video. This hostage is in reference video, to the three what? guys sitting on the couch informing their audience about the steps that they took in the <laughs> It looks like it, channel, though. As if there were people just off screen with rifles and high expectations. There sort of were. They were on the other side of a camera and miles of fire fiber optic cable, and the Try Guys found themselves in a position where, however shocked and betrayed their audience felt, their own livelihoods depended on appearing equally distressed. Appearing. It made this whole thing out to be just a glorified performance. Actions done only for show in order to appease an audience that somehow had them imprisoned. Heck, the whole that thing true, ends man. with this incredible line. You can imagine Ned Fulmer watching the video, seeing his former friends solemnly tamping down the freshly laid dirt, all in an effort to mollify an audience of strangers, and realizing that however badly he may have messed up, he was finally free. Oh boy. Okay. Man, that is true though, man. He did make a, a mistake, but as far as firing him, I, I don't really know though. You know what I mean? I really don't know. I understand that he was messing with one of their girlfriends or something like that, then yeah. But then again, it could mess up business too though, messing with them, like the workers and stuff though. So I kind of understand them on that side though. But wow, bro. Imagine your friends talking about you on like, you know, on social media and stuff like that. Your old friends that you was close by, that's kind of crazy. So there is a lot to break down there and all of it highlights mainstream media's mishandling of both online creators and more importantly, workplace issues like the Me Too movement. So let's just start with the YouTube stuff because that one is far less important. Now, I think it's no secret here on the channel that I'm not the biggest fan of traditional media coverage of our industry. I've talked about it on this channel, and this channel, and that channel, and, and this channel again, and is this probably why they don't write articles about us anymore? It's probably why they don't write articles about us anymore. Anyway, mm -hmm. just take a look at exactly how SNL decides to introduce what it is exactly that the Try Guys do to their audience. What in the world is a Try Guy? They're BuzzFeed pranksters who try stuff, like trying fingernail polish or weird haircuts. Oh, they talking about what they used to do in the past. And tried eating bugs. If you look across the wide array of YouTuber coverage, this one is always the favorite. Call any type of YouTuber prankster. Jake Paul? Yeah. He's a prankster. PewDiePie, prankster. Former NASA engineer Mark Rober. Well, yeah, he's the glitter bomb prankster. Mr. Beast? Obviously, he's a prankster too. There is no, no he's not. <laughs> world where what the Try Guys do would be described as a prank channel, but yet that word is a favorite of newspaper coverage because it evokes such a strong emotional response when you read about That pranksters. is true, though. Pranksters aren't people that you're meant to like. They're not someone that you root for. The that whole, is true. It's just a prank bro crowd is associated with low effort content that monetizes people's suffering. Call someone a prankster and immediately you're sidelining them in people's minds as someone who's mean-spirited and you probably don't want to succeed. And of course... That is true. That gives us a negative, like... 
like look on the people like youtubers put all that hard work how are you gonna label mr beast now as prankster i know that, that he can have examples but that is messed up though because when you think of prankster you think about negative stuff harming people and stuff like that making people feel uncomfortable all of that kind of stuff but hey i don't see nothing wrong with pranks in general i'm just saying like how the media try to portray people bro that's kind of messed up though of course, it's not just enough to just write them off as pranksters. You then have to highlight how much money they're making off of well, those you pranks have to, that make well. people mad. And they're millionaires. Okay. Oh, well, you readers and, and viewers millionaires. Huh? you work so hard at your job every day making pennies. But here are these pranksters on the internet making garbage content and getting rich off of it. Isn't that unfair? Doesn't that make you mad? The New York Times article actually takes a different approach that's even worse than this. Instead of calling Calling them just mindless pranksters, the NYT describes the Try Guys' backgrounds like this. A group of friends becomes a cast of characters and strip mines lives and relationships for content. Woohoo! If that doesn't sound flattering, well, it isn't. Uh, the crux of the entire article is that, yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat right watch now, man. Them, but only because they basically sold their How's soul everybody to the internet today? in exchange for their fame. Except that couldn't be further from the truth. The content that's made them so popular is just classic fish out of water reality TV. It's basically the online equivalent of dirty jobs or wife swap, where people <laughs> are put swap. in new uncomfortable situations and then they have to that learn man, to buff is crap, adapt, boy. You know? Dang. And no, the irony that I just used wife swap here as an example in this situation doesn't escape me. But it's entirely true. Their formats, like cooking without a recipe, I mean, it looks a whole lot like Chopped. Keith eats everything at a restaurant. Well, boy, that's... soon as they, soon as they uh, fire that man, they want to be cookers now. Like, they think they chefs. They, they had to change their whole thing, their whole niche up for that. That's just <laughs> the modern day equivalent of the eating show Man vs. Food. And yeah, that no, I mess one with them, video though. that everyone keeps bringing up as an attempt to embarrass them and tear them down, the one where they do the unthinkable and try on women's underwear, well, that's been a trope of comedy in media forever. I mean, True. there's an entire they don't episode of years. the sitcom Friends that Something is like named that. after that exact plot line. You wanna go? Yeah, that'd be great. Let me make sure I'm not doing anything Tuesday. Boy, they were a penny hook. Uh, they are a media company with something like 20 employees and they're producing reality TV content. Something that both of these news outlets should be familiar with, but either aren't or are disingenuously refusing to acknowledge in order to prop up a false narrative of digital creator bad. The article then implies that not only are they milking their lives for content, but they're actively manipulating their young, impressionable, and emotionally needy audience. The Try Guys were always bad people. Ned was just the first one to let the mask slip. They conjured a non-toxic brand of masculinity until Fulmer flicked the lights on, exposing the fantasy. Wow. Its severe mood was, in part, a performance, meant to reassure a world historically anxious and distrustful audience that they had not been led astray for the last eight years. Obviously, eight these years. are both really bad looks and pretty intentionally meant to discredit not just the current situation, but the whole system that holds it up. YouTubers function by fundamentally lying to their audience, maybe because they're low-life pranksters or because they're just manipulative of kids. That is true, though. A lot of these YouTubers be manipulative. I was just watching a doorman video when a dude, he was scamming his uh, audience for an iPhone 14, lying to them just to keep them watching his videos. I'm like, dang, why these YouTubers got to do all this extra stuff just to get their uh, audience attention, though? That's kind of crazy, though. Man, I'm a YouTuber, but I don't do stuff like that just to get people watching. You gonna watch, you gonna watch me. If you don't wanna watch me, just don't watch me, bro. I'm not doing all Remember, that. This is talking about the Try Guys. The Try Guys are like the Melba Toast of online content. And, and that is not meant to be offensive to the Try Guys or anything they produce. I love the stuff they produce. But if there is one thing that Melba Toast is known for, it is being not spicy. So what could the New York Times or Saturday Night Live have done? Well outside of some very basic research and being open and honest with their audiences. Hmm. For one, they could have connected with the fact that both of them are located in New York. And guess what? The Try Guys recently performed in New York, right down the street at the Great White Way, Broadway. Or Broadway, they're man. New York Times best-selling authors. Who also is the New York Times? Oh wait, the, the paper that's publishing this article in the first place. Synergy, programmatic synergy, friendos. Or if none of that makes sense, just 
Say that they got a Food Network show. Hey, you people, you don't watch the internet, but you do watch Food Network because everyone watches Food Network. Yeah, These true. are guys on the Food Network. Done. You understand who they are. I'm, I'm just saying, if the goal was to bridge the gap in understanding between YouTube and the readership of a 170-year-old publication or a 40-plus-year-old comedy sketch show, they could have done it very easily. They just didn't because that was never the goal in the first place. So listen Dang. up, mainstream media. Come here. Get up right in my said, face. Come here. Right get in my here face. Because I'm going to get real with you guys for a second. This is the hard truth. Playing ignorant with the stuff that's going on online is not the flex that you think it is. Whoa, isn't it funny that people care about these random dudes called the try guys who try things? No. No, it isn't funny. You guys get what on Saturday Night Live these days? What, like three and a half million views an episode? And wow. let's talk about TV numbers, which we all know is kind of like, meh. <laughs> it's not really that believable. Regardless, Listen, not believable. that random online Keith guy, he got just as many views from eating Panera. You are currently trading short-term jabs at the wackos on the internet for your long-term relevance. That is true, though. It's crazy how these YouTubers are getting more... Say, I just brought up Mr. Beast. It's crazy how Mr. Beast is giving more views and streams than these regular TV shows. It's kind of crazy to me, though. YouTube is the new television, bro. Nobody really watches television like they used to, bro. Or maybe you're only aware of online content to the extent that you can steal it. It's a Charmin Bears parody where the dad is disapproving of the son who's going to college and doesn't want to do the family business of butt wiping anymore. He wants to dance instead. My video was a Charmin Bears parody where the dad is disapproving of the son who's going to college. He doesn't want to be a butt wiping bear anymore and he wants to dance instead. That right there? That is Joel Haver. Amazing online channel, by the way. You know what, Joel? I, I have to disagree with you, though, because I watched the two videos side by side, and I don't think they're similar at all. For one thing, your video is actually funny. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get raked over the coals for this one. I'm making no friends. Because here's the thing. I'm not even all that concerned about this one. Yeah, sure, I get really mad about how they reported and mishandled this entire situation around online creators, but... Also, at this point, I've come to expect it. That is just par for the course. We get no respect over here. The real, much bigger issue with all of this, and the true reason I had to sit down on this couch, was because both outlets horrendously mishandled the core issue that prompted Ned's removal in the first place. I'm trying to understand why this story is such a scandal. Was this affair non-consensual? No. Worse, he committed the heinous act of having the a consensual act. kiss and not telling us his friends. The in <laughs> I like I say he had a consensual kiss and not telling us though. That's what it almost seemed like. They just upset at everything. Just him going on this little, you know, hanging out with that. It's so messed up that the audience and stuff uh, showed down that they probably was tweeting them that, oh hey, look at him, he's kissing this girl, like or DMing them, like that's weird though, like. Just have an audience like that just snitching on you and stuff. That's crazy. Higher controversy that led up to this is framed simply as Ned Fulmer sharing a consensual kiss and not telling his BFFs about it. That's and funny. let me be real clear. L add in the comment section, bro. This is this is actually a good episode, bro. This is funny as crap though about this because no media outlet seems to grasp this concept. The Try Guys are not some group of buddies. They are not just hanging out making some videos for the lols on the weekend. They are a legal and financial set of business partners who own and operate a very successful, very popular media company. They have legal and fiduciary responsibilities to each other and more importantly to their employees, which mm -hmm. in plain English, for all of you mainstream media writers who- What's up, I see, bro? Though, what is, what's, means that they how's are your day, bro? to put the good of the group How's your dad miss you, bro? Of individuals, not just because of morals, but because in a business with multiple owners, you have a legal requirement. Plenty of people have affairs. Plenty of people have open marriages. Frankly, yeah, we don't know the details of that relationship, and guess what? Who cares? We don't need to know. Yeah, Saturday don't Night Live, know. though, makes it sound like severing ties with Ned was this act of vengeance from jilted friends. We had no choice, and we hope he is somewhere on his back with a bullet in his brain and belly. Whoa, why did I have to go so off? Workplace like romances aren't the meat cute of the office circa 2004. As a business owner, a secret boss dates employee relationship is inappropriate in its power dynamics. Yeah. But beyond that, if you don't even want to get that far, it presents massive legal liability to everyone working inside that building. And if you're an owner who knows about it and chooses not to do anything,
anything about it, guess what? You're liable too. If that Dang, relationship I didn't know ends that. badly, it is a wrongful termination lawsuit at best and a sexual misconduct lawsuit wow. at worst. Now, you don't need to know the details of those two things, but the point is, either one can easily bankrupt the company and put dozens of innocent employees wow. out of a Over job. That? So instead, as a responsible business owner, you just cut your losses and you put that one employee, that one offending employee, Ned, out of a job. It's math, not intrigue. It's ethical and it's good business. The Saturday Night Live skit, though, not only tries to awkwardly diminish this relationship as a kiss between co-workers, as opposed to what it really was, a long-term relationship between boss and employee, that is true though. That was like almost like a business move. They try to do it for like long jeopardy because you know what they, they could have been in it very bad, especially them knowing that. Even the audience knowing before them, like they had to do something about it. I kind of understand more now, but it's still kind of messed up though. Oh, we're just doing that. It's not like the people them like the females didn't want to mess with the guy. Like they obviously knew what they was doing. I don't. I, these laws are crazy, bro. I don't know. Now. If you had a school, if you was at a school and a teacher messed with another teacher, like, it's okay to me. It's almost like in that sense, in a way. But, I mean, hey, I see where it can go in bad at, too, though. Relationships could mess up a lot of stuff, though. But let's go back. It then goes on to do what I am most offended by, to frame Eugene, Zach, and Keith as angry, betrayed friends, as opposed to what they really were, angry, betrayed business owners trying to do the right thing. Thing. The yeah, New York watch Times article SML actually takes videos. it further I got than you, that, bro. saying that the Try Guys have Braze to be so miserable. They Thank have to you, continue bro. lying to their fans and maintaining this facade. But Ned, he must be happy that he escaped. He got to drop the mask and he survives to live on another day. And you see, that is the wild thing that I just can't wrap my head around with all of this coverage. You know who received no blame in either of these examples? Ned Fulmer. In both of these pieces, it's the remaining three guys that are left on the couch that look like they're in the wrong. They're the overdramatic divas mad and ousting their friend out of pettiness. No, no mention of legally endangering the company. No references to making your co-founders implicit accomplices. No talk about predatory behavior in the workplace or wow. how the entertainment industry has this massive problem with sexual misconduct. No mention about how Ned built his professional brand all about being a loyal family man and undercut that brand in a way that jeopardized the livelihood of literally everyone in the business around him. I mean, all of those would be very valid and important takeaways from the situation. Why not mention any of that? Mm -hmm. Why would you try to vilify the people sitting on the couch trying to do the right thing? Well, it's because if outlets like SNL decided to talk about that, it might draw attention to the fact that Saturday Night Live has been accused of having a big of a sexist culture against women throughout the 90s and 2000s. Wow. Not much of a joke when it's about you, hmm, SNL? For instance, one woman allegedly was summoned to a producer's office and shown inappropriate pictures of him. Other interns what? have allegedly been brought to after-after after parties where... You know, you could just use your imagination what's going on over there. These are serious accusations, and this is literally just the tip of the iceberg. In some cases, lawsuits have also added in SNL creator Lorne Michaels and former cast members like Tracy Jordan and Jimmy Fallon into the mix, alleging that they were aware of this misconduct and enabled it in one way or another. Saturday Night Live has had these issues for decades and has never once had its owners or creators made public addresses to the audience to take some sort of accountability. Yeah. Instead, you get sketches like this. You can have sex with women at work without losing your job by following a few simple rules. Be handsome, be attractive, and don't be unattractive. Wow. Talk about things that haven't aged too well. It's no wonder they're making fun of the guys on the couch here, because if they didn't, they'd have to acknowledge that their own history has a lot more scandal and a lot less integrity than a bunch of YouTube pranksters. And you see, that is the thing that has gotten me so frustrated about all this. That is the thing that's gotten me to sit on the couch to make this episode. Mm -hmm. Everyone keeps pointing to the video that the Try Guys made on the couch as if it was some sort of an overreaction, some sort of over-dramatization. It wasn't. If anything, that sort of thing should be the new norm. It represents a generation of media companies who are trying to do better, to be better, who aren't willing to sweep scandals under the rug. Make sure you can watch SMA after this. And take Take real, meaningful actions when someone steps out of the line, no matter how high in the company they might be. You shouldn't be making fun of Keith, Zach, and Eugene. You should be following their example. At the end of the day, this isn't some weird fluke in the news cycle or something.
some weird children's obsession. This is the new generation of entertainment media companies. I'm doing an SML uh, tomorrow. Who are able I'm doing to swallow SML their movie pride, tomorrow. own up to their mistakes or their employees' mistakes, and then sit on the couch for some serious conversations when they have to. And from this couch, gotta say, that seems like we're moving in the right direction. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. That was actually crazy, though. Dang. That is crazy how the law is, though. Like, not uh, messing with the person you're working with, though. But dang, that sucks, though. That man was letting them use his house to make film and stuff to branch off from that company, from Buzz. Now, he's in it off with no friends friendship anymore. And he ain't really getting that much backlash. At first, he was, but it seemed like the three guys was at first, but... Hit the like button, subscribe. If you wanted me to do some more uh, film theory reactions, make sure you go do it right now by hitting that like button and telling me to do it in the comment section. I love you guys. You already know. It's a